there's a lot of talk about the different RTMS protocols. Um, from what I understand, they're divided into high frequency and low frequency um, protocols. What would be considered the key differences between the two protocols? We know that from the motor system, uh, because imagine that most of the brain stimulation facts we know uh, are derived from our experience in the motor system. If you stimulate the motor system, your thumb moves. That's, some, that's the only one of the few observable responses we can get. The only other observable response we can get is uh, occipital stimulation and you might see phosphine sliding up in your visual field. So if we stimulate the frontal cortex, you would expect that there's some conscious recollection, that you notice something, but there's nothing. We've underwent it. Uh, I've, I usually try out new protocols myself as well, but there's nothing yeah, really tangible due to frontal stimulation. So that means that what they found in, in the beginning was that if they applied one hertz stimulation, that seems to be more inhibitory, mm -hmm. whereas uh, 10 hertz stimulation tends to be more excitatory, meaning that if you apply, if you prep the primary motor cortex with 10 hertz stimulation, you need to apply less in order to induce a motor movement. So it's more or less excitatory. So from that jumping to the frontal cortex and the old-fashioned rationale of the frontal symmetry in depression, which we now know is, is not that accurate anymore, that's more an abandoned model at this point in time from my perspective, uh, but they still decided there's left frontal hypoactivation, so therefore it would make sense to do high frequency stimulation on the left or low frequency stimulation on the right. And to date, those are still the, the mainstay of protocols that are currently applied in the treatment of depression. Um, so it's based, still based on that rationale. Although some really good work from Australia, from Paul Fitzgerald's group, has also shown that if you would com do one hertz stimulation bilateral, people also get better. Mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of having r the large sample sized uh, studies to investigate it. Uh, I still would, con uh, con would advise everyone to stick to protocols we know work, mm -hmm. that is high frequency left, low frequency right, but hypothetically, I would think that for the frontal cortex, for the benefits in depression, uh, that the frequency would not matter that much. Okay. And coming from that as well, uh, it is also known that 10 hertz, or let me reverse that, 1 hertz TMS is considered to be the safest protocol um, because it's more inhibitory and there's almost never been uh, a seizure reported after 1 hertz stimulation. Also, for if you can ever feel it yourself, if you feel the 1 hertz stimulation on the right or the Woody Woodpecker kind of sensation on the left, you can also uh, conceive that one hertz is much better tolerated. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I think one hertz is a, is, is a good first starting point as well, which can be considered very safe. Okay. Although the guidelines, that's important, still tell you that 10 hertz is most well investigated and that's true. And so according to the guidelines, I think 10 hertz is the best choice, although there's really good evidence for one hertz as well. Okay, so if I understand correctly, there's no difference in the remission response rates between the two? No. No. Okay. Overall, I think th there have been many head-to-head -head studies, many meta-analysis. Um, it's really identical in its response mm -hmm. rate. Uh, and that's really due to what I explained earlier as well. The common working mechanism is that you're finding your entry point into projecting um, uh, or activating this deeper structure called the subgenual singlet. And right and left is both an entry point into that network. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it would make sense to start off with the one hertz. Yeah. And there's some newer protocols coming along as well. Uh, there's one interesting protocol called intermittent theta burst stimulation. It's a bit complex. It's more a pattern within a pattern. Uh, so we're stimulating with triplets of 50 hertz in embedded into a theta rhythm. Um, to cut a long story short, what they've recently demonstrated and got FDA approved as well, is that they now can do a three minute TMS protocol mm -hmm. uh, that has the similar efficacy relative to a 20 minute 10 hertz protocol. Uh, which I think opens up many avenues for further research into boosting uh, the efficacy uh, by combining multiple sessions within a day or within a session.